Hey everyone, it's Tamar here, and I'm going to give a little update and also talk about more specifically how I came to terms with being trans and then starting T, um, which is kind of a monstrous topic, so I won't be going over everything, but um, just the basics of kind of how I got to where I am right now, which is for four and a half months on T, almost five months. I kind of want to start, because there is no place to start, but where I would like to start is when I started gradually presenting more masculine, and that was when I was about 21 or 22. I cut my hair and I started kind of changing the way I dressed, and I didn't know I was trans, and I think that's a common thing that people say, like, when did you know, or how did you know, and it's the answer is, like, I didn't. And that's because I didn't have the vocabulary or the education at the time to know what to call what I was feeling. I literally tormented myself um, because I thought that I should just be fine and I should be able to live how I was made to live and I should be able to adjust and maybe it wasn't exactly what I wanted but why couldn't I just make it work? Why couldn't I just get this out of my head that something was wrong or that I should have been born differently and just accept that this is what I have? I think because I struggled with so much body image when I was a teenager kind of and growing up that there's this level of like accept the things you can't change but also if there is something you can change and you want to change it, like, and it's going to make you feel better, then I just, I, I attached a kind of a stigma to that in saying that, oh, well, I should just be able to accept myself the way I am, um, and I shouldn't need to do anything about it, I shouldn't need to change anything about me, but the way I see it is, like, I'm not really changing anything, I'm just, like, I'm just becoming something um, that makes me more comfortable so that was one way that I rationalized it I was so hard on myself I was my biggest enemy biggest preventer of change it was fear I think that prevented me I was scared that I was gonna do the wrong thing I was scared that you know I had all of these feelings leading up to this thing and then I couldn't cross over that point and so I kind of want to talk about how I was able to make the leap it is it sounds so cheesy like take a leap of faith but it's like kind of yeah that's like kind of what i did what bothers me is when people say oh if you aren't sure you shouldn't start tea and to a degree i believe that's true i think if you're still kind of questioning things and if you're still uncertain about how you feel comfortable then yeah maybe starting tea isn't the best idea for you right now in this moment in time not ever but just now just give your take your time give yourself time um to feel it's just a feeling. It's a feeling like I, I need to do this right now. Maybe I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I always, in the back of my mind, knew this is what I needed to do. And I tried to put it off. And I tried so many things to avoid doing this. Because I just thought that I, I just was so scared. And I was like, it's, it's socially, how am I going to handle this? Like, it would just be easier if I don't think about it. And I avoid it. And I avoided it for so long until... <sighs> until I think a, a, a combining things came along. One, I was just more secure and confident and um, that this is what I needed to do. There is this element of sureness. Maybe it's not 100%, but it's like all things in my life have led me step by step in increments to this point. Like, I, mean, I think of it as like a diving board or like a a cliff of some sort if you want to think of it more in terms of nature and it's like every single event in your life like that I can think of since I was maybe three years old has just led me walking down walking down walking down very slowly very slowly making sure that this is where I want to go and now I, I'm stopped and I am looking down at all the things I need to do like possible name change talking to people to change pronouns social implications, legal implications, uh, implications with partners. I'm like looking down at all of this and I'm just like, fuck, 
Like that is so much and that is so scary. And like, do I want to jump there? Do I? Cause it's gonna hurt. And once I'm there, it's gonna be okay. But it is just really scary to, to make that jump. It was a change in me where I was just like, I can't keep doing this. I can't, I can't, I'm not living the, like, I'm not living my life. I'm not living life. I'm not, I'm not an active participant in my life. I'm just like, every single day is like, how can I get by? What's the minimum amount of energy I can use? Cause I don't have any to just like do my life. And that is no way to live. That's fucking terrible. It hit me kind of too when I was reading this book, Nevada by Amy Jim Binney. And it's about a trans woman and kind of just follows her, her life as it unravels, but also kind of comes together in other ways, which is what I kind of feel like mine was doing. And I read this part, I have to find it, hold on. It's pretty long, I'm just going to read it. Um, and reading this, it just like, it changed everything for me, so I'll read it to you. It came from the older practice of telling everybody who thought they might be trans that they must be absolutely certain that they were trans before they even considered buying some clothes or starting a testosterone blocker. It's the old narrative, the Johns Hopkins in the 70s narrative. The only people who are really trans are the people who knew explicitly from a young age are pretty without hormones and can't survive without transitioning. Trans women on the internet looked around and were like, well, maybe surviving for the per first part of your life in the role of a cis dude is an adaptive strategy. Maybe convincing yourself that you could never transition is a defense mechanism that enabled you to survive high school, family, work. But like most defense mechanisms, it wasn't conscious. And like most defense mechanisms, it became a pattern you weren't aware of. And then, like most defense mechanisms, at some point it stopped making your life easier and started making your life harder. Plus, the world has moved on from the narrative that says being trans is something to be avoided at all costs. It's moved on from the narrative that says the only way to be trans is to be young and tiny and pretty and into men and to transition and then disappear. There's a much better understanding of what it means to be trans now. You just are trans. The fact that your transition might not go smoothly because of the shape of your body or the shape of your family or the shape of your personality or the way that your sexuality has been shaped does not mean that therefore you can just decide not to be trans. You can't will it away. That was, that was the sentence for me. You can't will it away. Deciding to will it away is a defense mechanism that is inevitably going to fail and you'll be back where you started. Trans. Just older and more entrenched in a life that itself is not much more than a coping mechanism designed to keep you from having to be trans in the real world. If you're trans, you're trans, and if you're obsessed with whether you might be trans, you probably are trans. That was the passage that I was like, holy shit, Imogen Vinny dropping truth bombs. I always thought, oh, I can't be trans because I'm short, I'm 5'4". How could I possibly be a man? I'm not trans. I can't transition. I'm gonna look bad. I can't transition. I'm not, I don't look like, I don't look male already pre-T. I, you know, some, some guys just pass before T. And that wasn't me. And I was like, well, then I can't be. I'm not trans enough. I'm not this enough. Maybe I can will it away. Maybe I can just adapt. Maybe I can just be androgynous. Maybe I can just be genderless. Maybe I can just do, and it was like this series of things that was like, how can I not do this? How can I not do the one thing in my life that is actually going to help me? When I read this, I realized how messed up that is. And I was like, okay, this might not be what you need to do. This might actually lead you somewhere where you don't want to go. This might fuck up your life even more than it already feels right now. However, even if those things are true, don't you want to find out now? Don't you want to find out right now instead of when you're older and it's even harder? Because the truth is it's going to suck no matter what. It's going to suck having these conversations no matter what. And the way I saw it was like the sooner I do it, I need to, I need to do it now. I need to do it right now because I cannot live with myself if I don't at least try to make this better. For myself and I don't want this video to come across as like everybody star hormones like I know you're unsure and just do it like no that is not the advice I am giving uh, please don't interpret it that way you will know the only person who's going to know is you and you might not know how you know you might not know what switched or you might not know why yesterday 
is different than today and why today you feel this is something you need to do and yesterday you didn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as you feel that this is something that needs to happen in order for you to begin to feel like a person again, then I suggest you you take the risk and see how it goes. Because if you are one month on tea and you're like, nah, if you are two months on tea and you're like, nah, if you are three months on tea, you can stop. It doesn't mean you've, you've invalidated all trans people. It doesn't mean that you are invalid yourself. It doesn't mean that you've insulted the trans community by thinking you needed to do something and then realizing it wasn't for you. The whole, that's, that's the whole idea that detransitioning or stopping tea or whatever is, is, you know, offensive. I mean, I think we have, we feel an immense amount of pressure as trans people because people think we're lying or people think that it's a phase or people think all these things. And so to be like, actually, never mind, uh, feels really hard and feels really painful. But at the end of the day, this is your life. This is your happiness you have one shot to live how you want to live and if you're not willing to fuck all of those people who are going to give you shit and and find out for yourself then you're going to be miserable and i don't want you to be miserable i read that and i was like okay this is how it's going to be then if i don't if i don't try something and i was like mm -hmm. yeah no this is miserable i need to try something and, and that was starting tea for me. And that's how I kind of pushed myself to be able to start tea. And I will tell you right now that I want to continue to be on it. I think it's doing wonders for me. I think it's also making things difficult, of course, but not the way that it was difficult before. It's making things difficult. Like I have to talk to people at work or, oh, it's making me more dysphoric about these parts or something. It's not the hopelessness that I was feeling before. So please don't take this as like me pushing hormones on everybody. It's more like me trying to tell you that what you're feeling is, is not absurd or uncommon and that I felt it too before I started hormones. And if you want to read the rest of this book, which I suggest, it's Nevada by Imogen Vinny, you can go, um, I'll put links where you can buy the book because you can buy it either through uh, Blue Stockings Bookstore where you would be supporting um, a radical feminist bookstore or if you don't want to wait and you want to do Amazon Prime you could do that no one's judging you um, just giving you options I don't want to say my only regret is that I didn't do it sooner I think I think I don't have a regret I think I waited until the right time for me and and that's what's most important there's no rush you will know you will have the feeling when you know that it's something you need to try it's not necessarily something you're going to do forever. It might be something you do forever. These are all personal, I don't wanna say decisions, but it is, it's a, it's a personal feeling of what you need to do. And so I wish everybody the best on their own figuring things out. So I love you guys and thank you as always for listening and watching. Okay, bye.